Hey, welcome to our teaching video on polarization, depolarization, and repolarization. A very abstract concept, so we thought it'd be a good idea, a good idea to actually uh, give a bit of a teaching instructional tutorial video uh, on this topic here and that. So, uh, if we take a look at polarization, polarization is also known as resting potential. This is an unexcited neuron, something that, that hasn't been stimulated by some type of stimulus like heat or temperature or uh, pressure or any of that kind of stuff. So it's unexcited, it uh, hasn't been um, stimulated yet. So uh, polarization, polarized just like it sounds, it actually, if you're polar opposite, that means different. You're different from, let's say, your partner or whatever it is. But polarization means different. So in this case, when we're talking about resting potential, we're talking about establishing more positives outside the neuron relative to it being negative inside the neuron. So more positive outside. That's what polarization is. We're trying to build up the amount of positive charges on the outside relative to inside. So if we take a look at this little video here, we can see one of the ways that we establish polarity is through that sodium potassium pump. And we've talked about that, it's in the notes quite extensively. So what this is doing, it's pumping three sodiums out for every two K pluses we're pumping in. Now I know that seems contradictory. If we're trying to get positives on the outside, why would we be pumping some 2Ks in? And we're gonna see that that potassium, the K plus, is going to be utilized later when we, got, we, when we try to establish um, polarity again, when we try to repolarize. We'll talk about that later, but if you even take a look at the ratio, three to two, you see that we do indeed have a higher number of positives on the outside relative to inside, okay? Uh, the other thing is what accounts for these negativities on the inside. If you take a look at this, it talks about being large anions, which are just negatively charged molecules. In this case, a lot of them are going to be negatively charged proteins. We also have some negative chlorines in there as well. So that's why we have more negative charges inside the neuron relative to outside. When we actually take a look at how negative inside it is when we actually measure this with a electrode. So if we put an electrode inside a neuron when it's at rest, it will be approximately minus 70 millivolts inside. That's how negative it is inside at resting potential. And we're gonna see how that changes once we have that neuron exposed to some type of stimulus. Okay, so that is resting potential. If we take a look at depolarization, now we're talking about a, an excited neuron. So a neuron now has been exposed to a sufficient enough amount of stimulus. And this is the big deal. It causes sodium voltage gates to open up and sodium, which is positively charged, comes rushing inside the neuron. Okay, so we can see that here. So you can see the sodium rushing in and once the positives are inside, you're gonna see that this section right here is now said to be depolarized, okay? And we're gonna talk about this wave-like motion in a little bit. So in this example, when uh, we actually take the uh, electrode and we measure how positive is it inside, you can see right now that this typical diagram that you're gonna see, and we're gonna have another uh, teaching video on this particular diagram because it is an important one but when we actually take a look at it when it's depolarized enough sodium comes in to reach what's called threshold right here so it's just an imaginary line and if enough sodium comes in right at threshold that's exactly when those sodium voltage gates open up and sodium comes pouring in and you can see how positive it actually gets it'll reach what's called maximum depolarization. And in this particular diagram, maximum depolarization is plus 40. That's how positive it is in the inside. And that's the actual excited neuron, uh, which produces the impulse. Now, if uh, just while we're here, if not enough sodium comes in, so let's say there was a stimulus that wasn't sufficient enough to reach threshold, little bit of sodium came in, but not to reach threshold. This is just known as a 
false stimulus. You don't feel a thing. It's not excited. It's an all or nothing response. Either you have enough sodium to reach threshold and therefore get an, an action potential, or you don't and you don't feel anything at all. Okay, so this depolarization, if we take a look at it, actually occurs in kind of like a wave of action potential or a wave of depolarization. So what we mean here is this particular section, if I notice right here, it has the positives on the inside. So this section is said to be depolarized. What will happen now is the next section will then become depolarized and then we get this wave-like motion of depolarization that will occur down the axon of a neuron until it reaches the axon terminals. So that's kind of how it works. And it goes, in this case, they're showing that the action of uh, action potential propag uh, uh, propagation, so uh, basically what they're saying there is the direction of the impulse is, in this case, going from left to right. And what you will notice is that always behind it, what we have to do is we have to get it back to normal. We have to reestablish polarity behind it. And I'll talk about that more in another slide. Uh, one thing we should note right here as well is that in myelinated neurons, and if you remember correctly, we have two types of neurons. We have myelinated that have myelin sheath on it, and then we have unmyelinated. Myelinated neurons are found in the PNS, the peripheral nervous system. So we're talking about sensory neurons will have myelin and uh, the motor neurons will also have that myelin. Okay, uh, this depolarization as we described it, and again, depolarization is where sodium comes rushing into the neuron, making it more positive on the inside temporarily. Uh, this in a myelinated neuron occurs only at the roads of Ranvier. And the whole purpose of this myelin is to speed up the impulse transmission. So if I take a look at this diagram here, depolarization will only occur at these nodes of Ranvier. This myelin sheath that we see right here, right? So the myelin sheath that we see right here, uh, charges can't pass through that. You can't get no charges passing through. It only occurs where there isn't any of the myelin. And of course, that's the nodes of Ranvier. So this causes the impulse to jump from node to node. So we had something in our notes called saltatory conduction, which is Latin for jump. And what this does, it speeds up the impulse, so it's much faster. So sensory neurons, we want to get that message to the central nervous system for interpretation very fast. So it's important that sensory neurons are myelinated so we can speed up that impulse from it jumping to node to node. It doesn't have to go down the entire length. Motor neurons, same thing. We want that message to get to the effectors or the muscles so we can respond appropriately much quicker. So it's really important that motor neurons are myelinated so that impulse can jump from node to node, making it a much faster nerve impulse transmission. Uh, if we're talking about unmyelinated neurons, which are often found in the central nervous system, interneurons, uh, it's a slower transmission because they don't have myelin. So they have to actually, uh, that impulse has to be conducted down the entire length of that neuron. It doesn't have the benefit of jumping from node to node like myelinated neurons do. Okay, uh, that leads us now to repolarization. Repolarization, of course, is returning it back to normal, back to polarized, okay? And remember I talked about the fact that we had a sodium-potassium pump that's pumping three NAs, sodiums out, two Ks in, which are also positive. Seems counterproductive, but this is why we needed that positive pumped into the neuron. So at maximum depolarization, we shown in the previous slide as plus 40 millivolts, sodium gates slam shut, potassium gates now open, and that causes potassium to leave the neuron. And you can see that just in this diagram right here below here. Okay? And what happens is we reestablish the polarity. Again, polarity is the positives on the outside. But we did, we used, utilized potassium in order to do that. Uh, if we see this wave-like motion of sodium rates here, so right here, this little section is showing that this section is depolarized, okay? So what happens to this sodium? This sodium basically just diffuse, 
diffuses down the axon until it's released at the terminals. So how do we get the positives back out behind it? So this would be considered behind if your action potential, your impulse is going from left to right, this would become area right here would be behind depolarization. Well, this is where we kick, and you can see that in the diagram, we're kicking potassium out, potassium gates open, potassium is removed outside the neuron, and that reestablishes the positives back on the outside. And we need this because we need to get reset for another potential impulse to come down that axon. Uh, when you're touching, we don't distinguish uh, between something that's hot and cold because of the amount of sodium that comes in. It's not like that. Maximum depolarization will be the same whether you're touching something warm, lukewarm, or if you're touching something hot. How our brain knows that something is very, very hot is the number of impulses that come down. So when something's very hot, you will get nerve impulses shooting down that same neuron very quickly. So it's really important that once we depolarize the section, that right behind it, we get it ready for another impulse. And that's where repolarization comes in. And again, that's established when we move the potassium uh, from that, uh, the K plus from the neuron. That reestablishes the positives on the outside. Okay, and again, so this is showing right here, this particular section here is showing repolarized, where we're kicking out, and you can see that right here, K, potassium. When we kick the positives on the outside, look what happens to the millivolts inside the neuron. They now are dropping from positive 40, dropping, and it actually overshoots a little bit. Uh, your book, I think, describes it as overshoot. Sometimes they say undershoots. And what they mean by that is actually getting more negative than resting here. Resting is minus 70, but in this case, we actually overshoot it. We kick out so much potassium that we actually get even more negative. In this case, overshoot is minus 90 millivolts. Okay? And when we do that, that allows for the potassium gates to close. And the also, what also what it does is you see this little section here, uh, which is when it's excess positives on the outside, that is a form of hyperpolarization. Hyperpolarized, polarized means positive on the outside, more negative inside. Hyper means even more negative on the inside. In this case, minus 90 millivolts. That period now where you have the overshoot until you reestablish with the sodium potassium pump resting potential again, that's called our refractory period. And we need that in order to reset that nerve or that neuron uh, in order for another impulse to come down. It also uh, allows the impulse to go in one direction. We don't want the impulse going backwards. We want the impulse to radiate all the way down or propagate all the way down to the axon terminals, not go back to the cell body where it just came from. Okay, and the last thing I think we'll do is let's just do a little review. This is a really important diagram. You're going to see uh, questions very similar to this on the exam. Uh, so you want to pay extra attention. Again, I'm going to write out this diagram. Best, thing, uh, best practices when it comes to st uh, study strategies is to rewrite this yourself. Rewrite it many times. Go home. Go teach somebody. Teach another student. Teach your husband, wife, girlfriend, pet rock, whatever teach somebody and that will put it into a different part of the brain and uh, again incorporate that into long-term memory. So really quickly let's do this. Here are the dendrites. I'm not going to spend time labeling all this stuff because I think you, uh, we've done this in previous videos. There's the cell body but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to blow up this axon. Now I'm going to just show an unmyelinated axon for now just because I want to go over this concept. And then of course at the end of this would have the axon terminals. And then what I want to do really quickly is just divide, arbitrarily divide this axon up into three sections. Now, if I have the positives on the inside, and often they'll show the positives right in the middle like that. Anytime I see positives on the inside, I know that this is depolarization. And those positives, of course, are caused 
when the sodium gates open up, the voltage gates open up, and sodium comes rushing into that part or that section of the neuron. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of reference points. You're going to see a question later on. I uh, encourage you to look at the practice question that involves the direction of the impulse. But I'm going to put a couple of navigational points here. So I'm going to say on this end, I have a sensory receptor. And on this end, I'm going to have the central nervous system. Somewhere's down the road here, central nervous system. So we know that impulses often or always go from the sensory receptor to the central nervous system for interpretation. So the direction of the impulse in this case uh, is left to right. And that's important to know because we can't determine what's behind or in front of depolarization unless we know this direction of the impulse. Uh, we talked about three different type of neurons. We talked about sensory neurons, we talked about interneurons, and we talked about motor neurons. Just based on the information I gave you right now, we would be able to determine that sensory neurons take impulses from receptors to the central nervous system for interpretation. That's how I already know that this is a sensory neuron. Okay, so go back to the original point here. We said when positives are on the inside, because sodium gates open up, sodium comes rushing in, we say this section of the neuron is depolarized. That means in front of this now. So if we label this, let's say these were labeled uh, uh, one, two, and three, uh, that would make number three here now in front of depolarization because of the direction of this impulse. That means this must now be polarized. It's not excited yet. It will be very quickly because this wave of depolarization will work its way to section three. But right for this temporary moment, it's not excited. It's just polarized. And of course, we know that positives are on the outside relative to negative. Now, there are some positives in there because we have this sodium gate that's pumping out our, uh, sorry, sodium potassium pump that is pumping out three NAs on the outside, but it is pumping in 2K pluses on the inside. So there are some positives floating around, but it's mostly negative in the inside. And again, when we measure it with a millivolt uh, uh, electrode, we say it's about minus 70 millivolts inside. So this section number one now becomes behind depolarize and always behind depolarize we need to re-establish polarity so we know this section becomes the repolarized section okay and how do we establish that by kicking out potassium that's what gets the positives back on the outside getting ready now for another impulse so it, this very difficult topic uh, it's very abstract but if you are struggling with any of this after this video, please contact me and uh, we can go over it in another way or something until you get it because there are many, many questions uh, on your uh, unit exam, midterm exam, and final on depolarization, repolarization, and uh, polarization. Uh, one quick thing that I'll say, uh, and if I change these reference points, Let's say I put here that this is going to a muscle. And over here, we'll keep that as the central nervous system. We know that that would change the direction of the impulse because we know that messages go from the central nervous system to the muscle. So that would make the impulse going the other way. That would mean that this now becomes in front. This now becomes behind. So we would have to reverse the repolarization and the polarization. We'd have to reverse that. So you always have to look at these reference points. And of course, if we did reverse that, that would now make this a motor neuron opposed to a sensory neuron. So always pay attention to these directions or these reference points because they will indicate what type of neuron it is and of course, what direction the impulse is traveling. Okay, any questions, please contact me via email. You have my email address uh, on the uh, main Moodle page and we can go over this again if you'd like. Thank you.